Hello friends. In this video, we are going to create a wizard pages in AWT using a card layout manager. This video creates three panels acting as wizard pages. These three pages then will get assembled in one master panel. Next, we create a command panel for housing the next, previous and apply buttons. Then we assemble all these panels into a WT frame window. So here we use the already created boilerplate code for a frame window. If you want to know how to create a frame window, you can refer this video in this playlist. The playlist is 04 Java AWT. Very first video is talking about how to create a frame window. First, let us look at what is a card layout manager. Card layout manager is a one more layout manager uh, for the container. So we previously looked at grid layout, which is the layout to arrange the controls in a row and column then we look at the border layout border layout is the default for a frame window so which maintains five positions north south east west and central location then we look at a flow layout manager where controls moves from left to right or right to left depending on the alignment so like that, this card layout is one more layout manager for the container. Each component added to the container is treated as a separate sheet or a card. So we can call it as a card going forward because that's how Java named it. And the layout is card layout. Uh, so each component added to this container is treated as a card. This layout manager displays only one card at a time from its stack of cards. So if you add multiple card to a card layout manager, then the manager maintains all these cards in a stack. And it displays only one card at a given time. So the card you add first to the container is displayed first by this card layout manager but however you can change that using the show method by specifying the card name this means when you are adding a card i mean the component to the container you can give a card name then using the show method you can use that name to show a specific card We can also use the methods next and previous from this card layout manager to flip between the cards. Since we are going to create wizard pages here in this example, we are going to use next and previous method to flip between the cards. That means to flip between the panels. Here we are going to add panel as a component. So each card is a panel uh, for the card layout manager here. I mean in our example. Alright, let us uh, uh, get a quick preview of what we are going to do in this example. Here we will create an example which creates a UI for a wizard. The UI is mimics like uh, user is picking a theme name then they are giving a font and color setting. So here we are not going to apply theme for uh, Windows or Mac. This is just an example to mimic how a wizard can be created using the Card Layout Manager. So you will learn how to use Card Layout Manager. You will also know how to use panel nesting. Panel nesting we already saw. That's, that means the container nesting. So we will use the same 
uh, technology here in this example also and you will also know how various layout managers are assembled inside a um, frame window of course a container can um, employ only one layout manager but by making use of the panel nesting or i mean the container nesting you can uh, use multiple layout manager in a the rootmost uh, container here the frame window will be the rootmost container and you will see how it is going to arrange controls using different layout manager by making use of the panel and container nesting so this will be our first panel this panel if you see here it uses uh, two labels and uh, one text field and uh, two radio buttons so this will act as our first card so theme name user will specify a theme name then they can specify whether the theme is applicable to current user or all user using those radio buttons available in the bottom next we will create one more panel um, that will display a font name and size so user can uh, give a font name and the font size for the theme so that will be acting as our second card and third card will be uh, picking a theme color either they can pick a dark theme or light theme or a window style of a theme as i already told uh, here these are all just ui only we are not going to apply any theme in this example so you no need to worry that uh, this will uh, this example will change your existing theme so it's just a dummy example we, the purpose of this example is to show how a control can be laid out in a uh, frame window using a panel nesting and you will also see how called layout we are using here all right these are all the three panel and these three panel will be maintained by a master panel that is not shown here in this picture when we are proceeding with the example you will get a clear cut idea of how that uh, uh, master panel is using the card layout manager to manage these three panels next we create a command panel and that will be placed in the frame windows in bottom position and if you see here we have a previous and a next button so this previous and the next button will flip these panels using the card layout manager so that's the example we are going to create let's go to the steps one by one here is the first step uh, here we create uh, class members and if you see the very first member is the panel and we name it as wizard pen so in the previous uh, slide you saw there are uh, three panels right which uh, employs a uh, um, theme name then uh, font related settings after that color related settings so those three panels will be managed by this uh, master panel so we name it here as wizard pen next we use the card layout sheets then there is a variable for a, a sheet number to know which sheet is currently displaying after that we have a reference for previous next and apply and finally we have a command panel all right so these are all the class level members um, since we need this in the action performed method we declared all this all right now we will go to our next step so in the second step what we are doing we are creating a panel for uh, the card layout we also create the command panel here so there are four panel which is created in this step the first three panels theme name pan theme font pan and theme color pan 
So these are all the panel which is going to house the controls related to that specific panel. Then we create a command panel also. So we haven't added control yet. We just created these uh, panels. So first here we are loading the theme name panel and if you look at the picture here this theme name panel requires some two label one text field and two radio buttons so first we set a grid layout manager for this panel the layout is uh, five rows one column and if you see here we are holding a five control and each control will occupy one row because we specified a grid layout of five class one five rows one column next we create two label one is a specific theme name and another one is a usage and in the picture you can see the two labels that's what we are creating here two label controls after that we create a text field and the size here doesn't matter because the layout manager is a grid layout manager so whatever size you specify the text field will stretch to occupy the entire uh, grid size uh, we can say a cell size so here it is a grid of 5 comma 1 that means 5 cells so the control occupies the uh, entire cell so we already saw this uh, when we talked about the grid layout manager where we arranged a uh, uh, set of buttons all right next we create a checkbox group then we create checkboxes using this uh, checkbox group and you can see that here in the code the uh, label is current user and all user and third parameter we are passing checkbox group name so that means even though the object created is a checkbox what is displayed is a radio buttons which means the user can either select current user or all user so our first uh, panel is ready uh, of course uh, it will be ready once we add all these control and you can see the whatever control we created the gate added here using the add method and you can look at the order and refer the picture first we added a theme name then the text field after that a label then we added two checkboxes since it is grouped under the checkbox group that will appear as a radio button finally we add our panel to the frame window uh, this is just for uh, testing purpose we will uh, remove this add statement after we see how it looks in the frame window let us go to a eclipse demo and see how this panel looks and we will add all this code whatever we saw so far so here is our uh, initial class and this is our frame window let us start adding the code okay it is the constructor so as a class member we are adding the variable as we saw in the slide let us import all the required so panel is from awt and here we are importing the call layout then we are importing the buttons next inside the frame window constructor We create our uh, panels so first we are creating a panel for our uh, card these three are the panel for the card then we create a panel for a command panel so we haven't yet created the wizard panel that's the panel which will maintain these three panel using a card layout manager all right now we will create our first panel and test it
you see a red crash mark uh, with a circle right in the left panel so that shows that the error is resolved but uh, still the contact is not saved it is showing like that now once you see click save all that will go away so here if you see uh, our theme name panel we created with a grid layout five class one then we created all the control which was explained in the slide then we added it I mean the all control is added to the uh, theme name panel then we add this theme name in panel to the container of uh, frame window so first we add this control to the panel then we add the panel to our frame window now it's time to test how it looks so this is how it looks all right so our uh, first test run is over uh, in that we tested our uh, first uh, page our first code now we will load the theme font panel with the controls and we will test it and if you see here this is also going to use a uh, grid layout manager but uh, this time the grid is uh, two rows two column grid so that's what here we are uh, doing so for theme font pan we are setting a layout and we gave a grid layout manager to it with a two cross two grid then we create a two label and two text fields after that we add them to the theme font pan then we are adding it to our uh, frame window just for checking purpose all right now we will do our uh, second test run so we tested this uh, panel so I'm just removing this add statement here is our uh, font name panel so now we will uh, test this so this is how it will appear and this is our uh, second card first card is a uh, theme name and this is our second card So here is our uh, third panel which will be acting as a color picking uh, panel and you can see that there is one label and three checkboxes group and a checkbox group so that they are appearing appear, appearing as a radio button and this time here we are using a grid layout of a four cross one that means four row one column and you can look at the control creation first we create a label then checkbox group after that we create three checkboxes and we group those checkboxes under the checkbox group name chkg theme color after that we add all these four controls to the theme color panel which is arranging these four controls using the grid layout manager and finally we are adding this panel to our uh, um, frame window and if you see when we are adding it we are not specifying the location we know the default layout manager is a border layout manager and when you make a call to add by default whatever component you add it goes to the central position unless if you don't uh, specify a specific location all right anyway here we are just testing how the panel works uh, our panel appears when it is displayed so it doesn't really matter um, anyhow this code will be removed when we finally present the control uh, to our uh, frame window all right now let us do our third test run for this uh, the third card So I'm just removing this add statement and we will test our final uh, card. So this is how our uh, third card looks. Now we will add our uh, command panel and we will test that.
all right now we will uh, load the command buttons in the command panel so this is how the command panel looks so first we are doing a set layout and we are setting a flow layout for this panel so in the previous three panels we used the grid layout here we are setting a flow layout and to the constructor if you see we are passing the alignment we are passing the right alignment and in the screenshot below you can see that the controls are aligned towards the right so we create three buttons and the labels are previous next apply you can see that in the picture here so that's why we provide these labels next we are setting the action command for the buttons button dot previous we are setting the action command as a prv so we are actually sending a string that string acts as a action command so whenever user clicks this button inside the event handler because all three button is going to use a same event handler method so inside the event handler method without dereferencing dereferencing the action event we can make use of the get action command that will retrieve the string then we can compare that whether uh, it is previous or next or apply that way we can tell which button was uh, pressed previously we saw a different technique uh, in that we actually typecast the action command i mean the action event then we will compare that typecasted reference with the uh, actual reference of the button uh, which we store as a class member we usually created it in the constructor in the previous videos then we will refer those button references inside the dereferenced action event but here we are not going to employ that same technique here we are going to use a set action command and get action command uh, of course we will uh, make use of the action event but we won't dereference it as a button but we um, use the get action command then we will compare what command is uh, uh, given through this uh, command panel so that's why we are doing this set action command here after that we add the add these three buttons to our uh, command panel so when we add you can look at the adder previous next and apply since the alignment is towards the right the button previous goes towards the right side and the next statement is adding the btn next so btn next i mean the button next button will push the previous button towards the left so that the next button will get aligned towards the right the final button added was the apply button so it pushes the existing two buttons towards left so that the applied button will get aligned towards the right so that's how it appears here and you can see the previous next and apply buttons are seated in the correct location and they are aligned towards the right in the panel next we register these three button with the action listener using the add action listener method so in our awt frame window we are going to implement action listener and then we will override the action performed method so when user clicks these three button all three will land up to that action performed event inside that action performed event we will make so make use of the get action command here if you see the set action command was previously uh, provided with three different string so using the get action command we will get to know which button is producing the uh, action event next since we are going to use this button to navigate between the card so we set the previous and apply button in a disabled state why because the uh, wizard is going to display the very first page so clicking previous is uh, not meaningful and clicking the apply also not meaningful 
So the only button that will get enabled in the initial stage is the next button. Remember, all these codes are going to run in the constructor. So when the frame window is displayed to the user, only the next button will get uh, enabled. Here in the screenshot, the next is disabled. But uh, when the when this panel is displayed for the first time, the only button that get enabled is the next button. All right, now. We are adding it to the frame window and if you see this time we are telling a location we are saying that add it to the south location of the panel then the i mean the south location of the frame window then we are uh, passing this uh, command panel which contains a three button all right now we will uh, test this in uh, eclipse so since this is not a uh, central location um, it's worth uh, testing it and uh, after displaying this uh, we will resize the frame window so that you will get an idea of uh, how flow layout behaves when the alignment is uh, set towards the right. Alright, so we have to implode our flow layout, then So at this stage, since we are adding the listener, it is time to implement the action listener here. Here we will go and we will put uh, action listener. Next we will implement a unimplemented method. And if you see the Eclipse generated this code for us, we will remove this comment. Now, we imported the border layout also. Now it is time to test. Uh, so other panels are not in the frame window. So we are just testing this command panel only. So the central portion of our frame is left unoccupied because we removed our previous add statement here. All right. I mean, none of these three panels are added because all these three panels for the card are already tested. So I'm just to remove those add statement. Now we will check only this command panel and if you see it appears towards the right so in this uh, empty area we are going to create a master panel then we will add these uh, the three cards to that master panel then we will put that master panel here in this empty area all right now we will resize it if you see since it's in the flow layout as well as the border layout south if we move it towards right the control will so whatever panel we add here that will get resized but it maintains its position in the flow layout since we set the alignment as right even if i resize it with twice the controls goes most towards right all right so usually these are pages um, the here we are using the grid layout uh, we haven't studied more efficient uh, layout so far um, so in future we will learn about other layout and you can even put a suitable layout here uh, so i mean all three panel if you see here we are using the grid layout the, there are better layout 
since we haven't studied that yet in this video series i am not uh, using that here here i'm just using whatever we already learned all right now we will go to the next part so now we have four panels ready three panels are for the card so that you will act like a wizard page some people will call it as a property sheet or some people will call it as a wizard page here in java awt people will call it as a cards so the three panels that will act as a card is ready and um, a panel for the commands that's also ready the only stuff that is pending is the master panel that will use the card layout manager and assemble the uh, three panel that will that is going to act as a card so here in this step we will do that so what we will do first we will create a new panel then here if you see we are creating a card layout and we are storing that in a reference called the sheets so here in this uh, we are going to use this uh, sheet reference in our uh, action performed method but because we need this uh, sheet to flip between the cards so that we can make a call to next and previous method so that's why we declared this uh, sheet as a class member all right so we created a wizard pan then we created a sheet as well then we gave this sheet to the wizard pan that means now wizard pan which is going to act as a master panel is employing the card layout now whatever you add to this uh, wizard panel will be managed by this uh, card layout so in the very first slide of this uh, training video we saw the behavior of the card layout right so the layout can display only one component at a time and you can uh, flip between the component using the next and previous method and whatever card you add for the very first time uh, that will get displayed by default and we also talked about the show method in this example we are not going to use the show method uh, so when you add a panel with a name then using the show method you can use that name to randomly show any card using that uh, name that means not in a specific order you can pick a card by its name then you can show it since here we are going to create a wizard page uh, we are going to use the next and previous method of this uh, card layout all right now our wizard pan is ready and it is employing the card layout now let us add the components here if you see we created the three panel in the previous slides right theme name pan which was already tested with um, uh, frame window and we tested theme font and theme color pan and we also know how it appears now we are adding these three pans to our wizard panel next we are adding this to our uh, frame window so here we explicitly specified border layout dot center even if you won't specify this wizard pan will get added towards the center at this stage if you see um, the frame window that uses the border layout and in that border layout we are going to use only two slat one is the center slat and the south slat center slat is uh, occupied by this wizard pan and the bottom slat is occupied by the uh, command panel and if you see the frame window is using the border layout manager and the center part of the border layout manager is equipped with this wizard pan and this wizard pan is uh, 
considering three components as three panel and it manages those three components that means the three panel or three cards using the card layout manager and each individual panel here i mean the card panels is using the grid layout and in the bottom panel we are going to add our command panel and that panel is going to use a flow layout with a alignment right and if you see how we are using the panel nesting and employing the different layout managers right all right so here if you see uh, if you take frame into only it's still using the border layout manager only but if you look at the nesting the frame layout manager is using the border layout it is using the flow layout at the bottom and it is using the card layout and each card layout is using the grid layouts right so that's the power of the um, uh, panel nesting i mean the container uh, nesting all right now let us go to the eclipse demo and see how it uh, works so here is our uh, final step and we will remove uh, no need to remove so we still need to add our uh, command panel towards the south of our uh, frame window now so in the previous test run we saw there is a empty portion in the center right now we are filling that with this uh, wizard panel so this is the wizard panel and for this wizard panel we are adding the the panel which we already created and tested so this is the first uh, panel second and third panel that we are adding it here to this uh, wizard panel and the wizard panel is making use of the card layout that means only one panel will be shown at a time so we can switch between these uh, panels using the next and the previous method so that we will do in the action performed so that's our next step but for now we will test how it uh, works so this is how it looks now so specific theme name this is the very first panel we added so by default that is shown here there are three command button which is added towards the south of this uh, frame window this button won't work because uh, we haven't uh, added the code here in the action performed so we will do that now okay now we will go with our uh, final step now we will implement the action listener and if you see here the action listener will get a parameter of action event e so we are using that object action event e here e dot get action command so this will retrieve a string so do you remember when we create the um, command panel we set action command for each uh, buttons using the set action command so these strings are previous prv next and apply so here if you see uh, we are retrieving the action command so whoever is producing the event that button will give the corresponding action command set to it so if you click the next button then we will land up here and e dot get action gap and will return next so we are using that string to form a switch case and if you see when the button click is previous we are using the sheets dot previous here sheets is the reference to our card layout that means we are invoking the card layout so previous method and what we are passing is its parent so the parent for the sheets is wizard pan so we created a wizard pan that means that's the panel we told that as a master panel and that panel uses the card layout then the panel is added with uh, three panels i mean the panel managed by the grid layout so those three panel is added to the wizard panel which maintains those three panels using the card layout manager so since we have both the reference sheets and wizard pan we are making call to previous here in this action command sheets dot previous wizard pan 
So if a previous button is clicked, we are asking the card load manager to flip the card. That means whatever is called in the order or in the deck, move it. Just take the previous card and display it. That's what we are saying here. For the next case, we are making use of the call to next method. The, the same sheets dot next wizard pen. Wizard pen is the uh, parent to this uh, card layout. So sheets is the card layout, and who is managing that card layout? The wizard pen is managing the card layout. So that we are passing here as a parameter to that card layout manager. Next here in the next method, we are enabling the button previous because user clicked next that means now they are eligible to go to the previous card so we should have kept the similar code in the case for previous also there we should have enabled the btn next uh, we will do that when we are doing uh, this in the eclipse all right so in the apply button we are not doing anything so since this is just a demo purpose, we are not doing. So in real world, the apply button will do the task of applying the theme in the for the application. All right. So so this is not enough. Here, if you see, we are making use of that a sheet number uh, variable. So we will use that to enable the apply button when we are in the last card. So first here we are checking whether sheet number is zero. So if it is zero, we are um, enabling the button previous. Next, when sheet number is two, we are disabling the next button. Set enabled equal to false for the next button because we are at the last uh, sheet so we are disabling the button so otherwise we are enabling the next button similarly we enable the apply button when we are at the last sheet so when we when we are at any other sheet we are not uh, enabling that apply button so it will be in the disabled state All right. When sheet number is zero, the same thing we are doing for the previous button also. When we are at the first sheet, we are disabling that uh, previous button. And when sheet number is other than zero, we are enabling the previous. Why? Because we are not at the very first sheet. That means user can go to the previous state. I mean the previous sheet. All right. That's what we are doing here. We are just doing the enabling and disabling. Also, the important stuff what we are doing is we are flipping the card using our card layout using the previous and next method. All right, now let's go to the Eclipse to see the demo. So, whatever you saw in the slide that will be implemented here, and if you see, this is the action event E, and we are using the get action command. This will return the string associated to the uh, button. So we already used the set action command, right? So it will retrieve the string. Then we are using the switch case and we take the necessary action. So here we already kept a set enable to true true for next and previous. Apply we are not doing anything. Here we are enabling the button state. So now so the key here is uh, this. Uh, so this will tell you how we are uh, flipping between the card using our uh, uh, card layout manager. If you see here, the instance here is a card layout sheet which we created here just uh, at step seven. And the wizard pan is the uh, parent. So wizard pan is managing the three panel using the card layout so we make use of that card layout we make a call to previous or next then we pass the container which is managing or which is uh, employing this card layout 
all right now we will run and if you see initially these two are disabled and when i click next it is going to flip and you can see the next panel is displayed and i may click the third one will get displayed and this time the apply button is enabled and the next is disabled so if you want to change something they can go back and they can do make the modification and come back here and apply so that's all here in this uh, video uh, i think now you have a good idea of how the layout manager works and how you can nest nest containers with a different layout manager and you see how efficient the panel is when you want to perform the uh, container nesting so this video introduced you about the card layout manager also and how you can flip the card and use card layout manager to create a wizard like pages that's all here in this video thank you for uh, watching if you like the channel subscribe it bye